Hello, my friends. I now invite you to enjoy this classic Dr. Groovy lesson. Hi, folks. I'm Scott Grove, here today to give you some lessons for free. That's right. If you need to check out any of my other free lessons or the lessons you have to pay for, whether it be downloads or uh, DVDs or whatever, there's a link right down below. Um, just click on it and it'll take you to my one of my websites and you can get all the free lessons you want plus all the paid lessons you want. Um, the request was for some very easy uh, bass stuff. Um, some people are wanting to know why aren't you doing the more difficult things. That's because the more difficult things are uh, something that if you're ready for them, uh, you should be able to figure them out on your own. Okay, the best way to remember things is to actually figure them out on your own and not use a teacher or not take sneak peeks off of YouTube or not buy lessons from me or anybody else. If you're ready for that, figure it out on your own, you'll retain it more. Um, but for those of you who are just starting and um, such, that's what I'm here for today. Okay, I had a request to help people out in country music and rock music and um, um, worship, church music, everything that are just um, really getting started on the bass. They're, you know, playing places, but they're just sticking around on that one being, meaning your root note. So if you're in the key of G and you have the band playing behind you, say this, and you're just sticking around on G like this. Then the band goes up to C and you just go back to G. Okay. So I'm here to help take care of that um, and how to put in some you know nice easy stuff like this that will embellish what you're already doing but um, not get too fancy not get too um, busy to take away from the melody of what's going on, especially in you know worship music and so forth. So for mainly, like I said, the country players, you worship players, even the rock players, anybody that um, is just stuck on just playing the root note, so whatever key you're in, or whatever chord you know the rest of the band is playing, we're gonna cure that here and now. Okay, so we'll get the camera right down here in my crotch where everybody just loves to look. Okay, today we're playing the infamous old, you know, 1981, or I think it is, 80, 81, something like that, uh, PVT-40 bass. Good old basses. They'll be around forever. Uh, big old hunk of, big old hunk of hunk of wood. Okay, so let's go to the G. Let's learn um, some quick patterns, and then we'll manipulate it into some actual music. Okay, so the G being on your low E string on the third fret. And I'm going to play way up here with my hand just because I don't have split screens and all this junk. So, um, don't play up here. Play back here where you're supposed to. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we are on the G. So your third fret on your low E string. Okay. We're going to play G, C, and D for probably most of this lesson. And you can put it anywhere, of course. Um, it's just a matter of getting our patterns put together. Okay. What I'm going to show you... Again, let's just start with this basic country pattern. Okay, so normally, listen to the bass drum. One, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, one, two. Okay, so you have to also pay attention, to, of course, to what's going on with the bass drum. If he's going one, two, three, boom, boom, so one, two and three and four so you got to hit every kick drum note okay but you have plenty of room in there you know to fill it up and that's why we're here to fill it up you're tired of playing it's 
it's nice to throw all that kind of stuff in. So let's get to it. Let's create our first box, which is going to be um, a root, fifth, and a third. What am I talking about? No. <laughs> is um, Actually, yes. Um, let's do the whole one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thing, the do, re, mi. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. It's very elementary. You probably already know it, but it takes three minutes to discuss it. If you know it, skip ahead. That's what the bar on the bottom is for. So if we're in G, we're going to go. Okay, so the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, di, do. Okay, that is very quickly. You can rewind if you need to. And count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So third fret, one, fifth fret, two, second fret on the A string, three, third fret, four, fifth fret, five, six, um, six is going to be the second fret on the D string, and then fourth fret on the D string, and then eight is going to be the fifth fret. Okay, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that way I'll know what I'm talking about when I say the root, the third, the fifth. If I say the fifth, that means one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's get our shortcuts so you don't have to count it down every time. One is the key of the song you're in, the root. Four is always going to be straight down, just to the next note one string down. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so the four is always going to be straight down. I know this part is boring, but you must know it. One, four, five, four, one. Okay, um, bass players are known for playing root fifth, meaning root, the key you're in, then the fifth, then root, fifth. Play it along to that beat, and you have Root the fifth and root and fifth and root and fifth and root fifth. And root. Okay, so that's what bass players are mainly known to be doing, especially in country music. Okay, and and all kinds of other music, but this is the foundation of the easy part. And then we're going to grab all these other things, the all the notes actually, except for the seven. We're going to actually flat that seven um, in a second. So we got root, fifth. Okay, now it's nice to put a nice little skip in there, a hop, skip, and a jump. Root, root, fifth, fifth, root, root, fifth, fifth, root, root, fifth, or one. One five five one one five. Okay, so you're not just going one five one five one. Okay, so you've already got a bounce created. One one five one. Okay, so one five five one one five five one one five five one. Okay, so nice and easy with this beat. Come back at me. Okay. So let's grab it from here. Here we go. Root, root fifth, five, one, one, five, five, one, one, five, 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 one, one, 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 five, five, one. Okay. So you've got that is a nice easy to way. That is a kind of a sitting on the dock of the bay thing. Um, if you want to create the rest of that, you actually add the four in there with it. Okay? Instead of when you're going up to the five. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, which I told you was just straight down. So, so you do this. Put the four, and then we do what's called a hammer on. Okay, so you have a finger on the C note or the third fret of the A string, 
and then you actually take any finger, whether it be your pinky or whatever you can reach, your ring finger, slap it on there, or actually what's called hammer it on to the fifth fret of the same string, on the A string. So you only hit it once with your finger over here on your right hand. Okay, well that gets you your actual sitting on the dock of the bay thing, and now you have three notes that you can play. Okay, and from, let's go ahead and put that together real quick, just to say we did it. Two, and a one, two, three, four, one, and five, one, four, five, five, one, five, one, four, five, four, five, one, now shut up. bass is the one instrument other than steel guitars and so forth which are expected to do little slides now and then but not all the time because it will drive people nuts if you're always going nothing gets older than that because then they know the bass player don't know what he's doing he's just looking for something to do he don't know any licks so he just goes <laughs> okay so that gets old but you can Slide up into them. Okay, so I'm just sliding up. That's actually a flatted seven. Going back two frets, just like you're going back two frets here. Okay, so you're going back to the first fret. You don't want to slide from the open. Um, it's just typically not done, but it's music. You can do whatever you want. But that's typically where you would go to is actually called the flatted seventh which is this since I'm talking about it one two three four five six instead of going seven you go back one and an octave takes you back to here so that's actually an F note takes you to F here the so flatted seventh um, so it's best that you know all your notes try to learn them as you go Anything you print out on the internet will tell you what the notes are, um, being that this is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, but we're not going to use it, we're going to use F, and then back at the G. Octaves are simply G, skip a string, go to the D string, and go to the 5th fret. You have to know that. That is also called your 8. Your 8 equals 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's back where you started from. Okay. So if you're doing this, it only makes sense that you also use the 8 or the 1 again in the exact same way as you're using your first one. So. Okay. See what I did there? And actually, instead of coming back down to this low G, you can come up to the octave higher. Okay, and since you can actually have a finger waiting here at the fifth fret on your A string, you can flatten it out. Then you can kill it with your right hand, hit that octave or the G note, kill it, then hit the fifth fret again, but on the A string, kill it again, then you're back to your. little thing to get used to playing. Okay, 
you can even sit there and just play it um, just for fun just to get your fingers working and to know that this is your one first little box and you have and same thing for going up to your octave going to the D string that is one two three four five six the flatted seven and up to eight so you have root four or five flatted seven to one or eight okay so you have a box meaning you have this group of frets here you're playing on this dot and on this dot you're playing everything so far except for your low E string on the fifth fret. Okay, so any little thing like this I do, jump in because there's going to be a bunch of information really fast. These are all hammer ons. Okay, what good is that? It's what good you make it. Okay, again, there are no um, set laws here. These are, these are suggestions. Okay, but these are things to get you out of that whole root funk. How can we apply this? Let's find out. certain amount of notes in the whole world. There's only 12 notes in the world. It's just a matter of what order you put them in. Is all I did was four, five, I'm going to call it seven from now on, even though it's a flatted seven. Okay, I'm just going to call it um, major seven actually is what it is. Um, so one, four, five, seven, eight, or one. to the seven and then back to the one okay so work on that one that's a good one and depending on how you work with your fingers over here I don't know if you're using the pick or a finger and it actually doesn't matter except for if you're using a pick for whatever reason it's not a no-no but um, they just offer different sounds. Usually failed guitar players end up using picks. But then again, picks are great for stuff when you have to get that sound. It gives you a really crispy sound instead of the more mellow sound of you using your fingertips. But how do you get a cool sound um, from this? That's when you start learning to slap. Okay, whole different ball game. That video is available and you can find out how to slap for free anywhere from some of the people on YouTube. Anyway, so let's get back on track. Um, yeah, so you have that box to work out of. Now, let's get you out of the box just a little bit and I want you to play backwards starting from the one or the eight way up here okay this is just a quick lick I show this all the time whether it be on bass or guitar because this is a universal lick that everybody needs but it's a great fill-in lick okay so let's start from the eight or the one seven five Back up to the seven, back to five. These are not what frets they're on, these are the notes. One, two, three, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight, flat at seven, five, 
seven, five, four, narrow. This one don't this one don't even exist. Okay, we're going down to the first fret of the A string, then back to your root note. Okay. Slide it from the five to the four. Then play the first note on the A string. Then finally back to your G note, okay? That's a nice little thing to come back into is this chromatically means or chromatic means every note. So from the seven or the F, F sharp. So you just do every note up to your root note. Okay. Ballroom blitz. Ballroom blitz. If you're old enough to remember that. Okay, so the note or the lick ends up being. What's that? That's just the one I showed you before. Four, five, seven, eight. It's played really fast. So use your imagination. I've given you the notes. You get to learn how to apply them to different styles of music. Okay, so that's everything I've taught you so far. It's just using your imagination and playing them fast or playing them however. But that is your box, but I just took you outside of the box by giving you the one extra note. Okay? That's actually a flatted third. Okay? One, two, three. You flat the third, that actually makes it what is called a minor third. Okay? That's all you need to know. It's also out of the blues scale. Okay? So that's what that is. It's just called a flatted third. Take a third. Then you flat it. Okay. So it is part of the whole musical um, theory thing. Okay. Now let's get some more notes in here. So I can actually show you some more patterns. Okay. I want to give you all the notes that you can possibly play. Not that possibly play, but to get you by for this particular lesson. The other ones are going to be get up to this G string. Um, Okay, so now we have the exact same notes, but now let's start here, the octave higher. We started third, our third fret. Then we know the fifth fret on the D string is another G, but it's an octave higher. Now we can actually do the exact same thing again, start going one, two, three, four, five. Then we run out of notes. That's okay, that's all, for, all the further you need to get. Okay. And I'll show you a couple more notes to add, but do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so now you have all those notes to add. Okay. Okay, what good are those? All kinds of good. Now let's, um, do a couple more things and I'll show you how to use them, okay? So you have those extra notes. They're exactly the same as the others, but an octave higher. Okay, but now we also need to go... Okay, so from the four, remember this is one. One, two, three, four. Four is just always straight down. Now, from the four, we're going to the flatted third. A hammer on to the third. So that's actually from the third fret of the G string, hammering on to the fourth fret. And then back to the root. Okay, here's a cool way to get that. Is go root, then fourth, just by flattening your finger out. Root, fourth, root, then flatted third, hammer on to the third. Here. Okay, 
so the same thing. But if you're playing change keys or change chords but anyway so that gives you a buttload of places to play in order to get off of the root note okay so that's a lot of information use your backward uh, use your pause use your rewind whatever but anyway let's let me show you just a free form nothingness um, I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet other than use just those straight notes with that little country beat but I'm going to use all this stuff I showed you, okay? Here's the root fifth. Now, fourth with the hammer on. Now, so I just use the set uh, eight with the seven. Check that out. Some of it was kind of you know out there, but it gives you stuff to choose from, and you see how I used everything that I've showed you, just playing that lame country beat. Um, I can't say really lame because there have been three million country songs written at that exact same speed with that exact same beat. Okay, so let's find just a slightly. Um, I was going to do another thing, but let's don't. Let's go right up to the next chord change okay well we still have this we can change beats all we want but the uh, important part is what to play here okay so let's get up to the key of C so I'm gonna let this play so we're gonna be in the key of G just like normal now I'm getting up to C okay simple walk up just, okay, now we're actually going to use the box to fill it in with that second fret or the two of the scale. So G, our one, one, two, three, four. That's all it is to get from the one chord to the four chord, the four chord meaning the C. Now when you get to that next chord of the song, now everything takes on a life of its own again. Now this is your one. Okay, as far as all your licks and your notes go. The song is always still going to be in the key of G. And you are playing in the 4 now. But now, think of everything, because now you're in C. So everything that I just showed you now applies, but this is home base. So now you go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now everything changes. Now you can play here. Okay, now your root 5th. You don't have to play it there anymore. Your fifth is also, now that you're off of the low E string, you're playing on your A string, your fifth is always going to be straight above. Now your four is down here, okay, same as, here's your one now, and C down is four. So it's just an octave. Okay, so now, remember you have low notes to play now, so now you can play your fifth. Two, three, four, five. A low one here, so. Which is typical. Okay, so remember that you have fives all over the place. Now, well, you got two of them that you can think of right away. one we've been doing because when we were on a four string bass 
if you have a five string, hey, you're lucky you get to jump up and grab that other um, low D note way up here. But since you're, I'm on a four string today, um, as soon as you move down to this A string, now you can get that low fifth. Okay, and all that walk up is is going from five, six, now you're real seven, major seventh, eighth, it's no flatted seventh. It's a whole different ball game when you're doing a walk. This is a walk. So we're doing five, six, seven, eight, back to our meaning here, one. Okay. So let's get back to this and walk up to the, from the one, meaning in the key of G, up to the four, the key of C. Okay, so here we go. And one, two, and one, two, three, G. Now we'll walk up to C. Back to G. Up to five. Four. Back to one. to five, five down, one, okay, so you already know if you've been playing with people how to do um, the root notes, so that you've already been doing G, 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 and C, 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 and C, 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 and D, 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 and C, and D. Okay, so now we're getting away from that, okay? So very basic stuff, but this is uh, the building blocks to getting you off of that stuff, you know, okay? So you're bored. I don't blame you. You know, bass can be so easy and sometimes um, less is more. Um, try to tell girls that, they won't believe you. But, <laughs> uh, Gene's licking my bass. Uh, he, he has a habit of doing that. Um, <laughs> I don't know why every time I decide to do some, any kind of thing that might happen to do anything with the, any type of um, worship music or the likes, Gene Simmons always ends up on my shirt. Okay, it's time for a drink. <laughs> That's right, we're going to be good Christians, we got to have a drink. Uh, Arizona green tea with ginseng decaf, believe it or not. If anybody ever wants to know, no, I do not do any drugs, I do, except for prescription junk from strokes, but, of course, no alcohol, or I would be dead, I'm just naturally this goofy, and naturally this guitarded, that's right, okay, so let's get back on it, if you are in, um, any of these, let's say, uh, the back to the G, okay, now I showed you, that you could do the okay do the notes that were up higher with the octave okay so it's the same thing okay you have all these other runs that I showed you um, let's just do a couple more um, things that are kind of cool that we will transfer over to some better uh, or just more fun drum licks, okay? Okay, same thing that we've been doing but just to make you think differently. Okay, so you got your root, now your fifth, root, fourth, root, hammer on from your flatted third to your third, back to the root, okay, root, root, fifth, root, fourth, root, hammer on from flatted third to third, back to root, okay, 
okay so you can use your imagination but that's another just thing that shows you that the same notes that we're already using you can use them in so many different ways be creative and come up with your own stuff um, all these notes are what are called safe notes they are all in the major pentatonic scale and the blues scale the blues scale the only difference is you have the flatted third okay the and the okay and don't forget like guitar players you can bend notes anytime you want um, but you have to be good at it um, on bass especially and don't do them very often um, the one little lick where I showed you was okay that flatted third sounds great if you bend it down towards the floor it's the hardest to do because it's on the first fret and it takes all your energy you might use two fingers it's taking it from the flatted third just like you're doing the hammer on but going bend it towards the floor and be careful about bending a root note too just maybe give it a warble which is actually called um, just a little vibrato okay without actually bending the notes going that would sound horrible okay so okay okay let's get on with some different type of uh, drum tracks let's do dun, 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 dun. yes and we are sitting here with the lovely um, Casio of some sort, you know, they always got these great drum tracks in, but right now the little missus is asleep, so I don't get to pump out the big stuff through the good speakers, so we're playing nice and soft. Let's see what we got here. Let's pump it up. Okay, good old straight rock beat. Okay, same exact rules apply. Let's keep it in G one more time. And let's just see what comes to my head when I crank this uh, drum beat on. showed you okay so what is that so the one flatted seventh the flatted third third then your flatted seventh uh, chromatically up to your one again and same thing here okay up to the four back to the one then the hammer on from flatted third to third then same stuff I've been showing you so nothing different so it's just a matter of what you decide to put them to okay um, that is most of it um, only other thing are other keys okay so 
take the whole thing and let's just put this thing up into um, let's go to something different okay just to um, mess your mind up let's go down to E okay because now you're stuck thinking because you're not fretting something it's not so easy to go okay now you're going to go to E now what do I do oh holy um, well now it gets different okay but you have a couple places that you're going to remember are safe for you you're in E remember your 4 is straight down so that just means I got an A and my 5 is just 2 more frets up and 4, 4, 4, 4, 1 so my root 5th, root 5th I'm safe right skip a string go up two frets so instead of open E I skip the A string go up two frets on the next string your D string you have your octave and what's that mean that's your eight if you let off of it that's your flatted seven that gets us that lick again so what is that eight or one pull it off now, five, back up to that flatted seven, five, pull it off, now grab the third fret, which is actually your, <laughs> your uh, third, flatted third, give it some wiggle, the actual third would be up to your fourth fret, and back to open, okay, now your, same thing. Um, you have your E now. Now you're good to go. Okay, remember this. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're in safe territory, but you were in open strings. Okay, so that gives you a quick out. So there you're familiar with what to do with open strings now. So root, fifth. Okay, see? Now your other things from root Okay. Okay, that's your flat of third to your third and back to root. One, two, not quite three. Hammer on. You can actually go root an octave. Okay, that real quick one since that's louder, I'll turn that down. That's just simply four five, hammer on, then flatted seven. Okay. Same thing. Okay, if you need this stuff, this will help you out. Um, octaves. Okay, I just did the flatted third because we're in E now. So I'm going up to the flatted third, which we established already. One, two, three, nope. So we're going to use the flatted third. I want to do the G and the octave, down to the two and the octave, and then the E, back to one and the octave. So just 
quickie. Since you have no way from going E down to anything lower unless you have a five string. Okay, so your E. You don't even have to do the disco sound. Boom, 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 boom. You can just play one note. But it gets you off of just doing the one note. Okay, and that's our main concern. Back the drums. Okay, so to hear it really well. I'm playing up there. Those are just the same notes as before. They're to E, your one, then your four, A. I just went ahead and did A up here instead. Then your five, which we are always welcome to play root fifth, is a B note. I just played up here the seventh fret. So I'm just going. Just the notes that are in the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat, seven, eight. And playing them all in one string. Okay, so think of these things. They're all um, right here. It's all a matter of those numbers. Okay, so let's work a little more with something that... Um, Eh, might be kind of fun. Um, chords. Okay. Everything that you've already learned so far um, creates a chord. Very rarely will you use a chord as a chord, but you might need it sometime. It's best to play them on higher strings. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's do the first bar chord. And then we'll do a two note little chord that is very um, associated with bass guitar. So these are things you can actually use, not just things to annoy people. Okay, so a typical bar chord would be played, since it's a bass, you would have to play it pretty high in order to make it sound well. Okay, so let's go to that E, but we have to play it higher. So we're going to go all the way up here on your A string to the seventh fret. Okay. The only other thing you have to do is cover your five, okay, remember if you're here on one, four straight down, and two more up is your five. So cover your one, cover your five. Now if you flatten that out, you can actually cover the ninth fret also on your G string. hit your low E if you want. So if you have a, like a three-piece band or something, sometimes it's useful to do this. Or you can play with two fingers, use your pinky and your ring finger and this. They're just useful every now and then, so just know that that's all there is to a bar chord. If you need it, there it is. It's a matter of what you do down here and come up with yourself. I'm giving you a quick lesson. Take your pinky off, back on. Go 
right? So I'm hammering on both fingers. I'm hitting a low string. Okay, now the thing I was going to say, which is very synonymous with bass guitars, is playing this two note little thing that actually has the root and the third in it. Okay, and you have to go way up high to make this sound good. Okay, so let's go to, okay, we're doing the low E still. And on your D string, I want you to go up the 12th fret, which is going to be a D because everything starts over again at the 12th fret. What do you got to do to get to an E from there? From D, D sharp, and E. Yeah, so we're all the way up here to the 14th fret. What I'm going to have you do is use your middle finger on the 14th fret. So now we have a low E with our thumb. And then this high E, high E note way up here on the D string. And we need to find our third. How do you do it? Same as normal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is very useful in soloing. So remember that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, but the thing I was going to show you is the root and the third. One, two, three. So the third is going to be your 13th fret on your G string. So you have 14th fret for your E on the D string and I want you to use your middle, middle finger there and then the uh, 13th fret on your G string. Okay, that's just a great way to end a song. How is that? Because you get to the end of a song and that's right, you start with the whole thing back one fret hit both strings at the same time, preferably with the back of your fingernail. Okay, so the low E, low e is ringing. Or however you want to hit it. There's with my thumb. Okay, so you hear that all the time. It's just sliding in to home. Okay, so... And you're dead. in the big slide and I actually just went up to the E 12th fret don't just slide for the sake of sliding go somewhere go to the note go to the E okay so there's about as much as I can actually toss into uh, a whole hour for you so I hope I know it's a bunch of rambling and a bunch of random junk to be tossed at you but I wanted to throw as much stuff in there and as much ideas as I could based around a major scale and show you how to kind of just get off of those notes and how to just count to eight, okay? And learn to play in that box. Then the big box. <laughs> she needs love too. <laughs> Ain't that right, Jean? Okay. So, there you go, base basics, okay, so that'll get you out of the rut, um, even if we're back to, as I have like two minutes left, yes, I'm going back up and trying to find that country sound thing, because since it's the easiest thing for it to actually work on, excuse me while I belch all over the place, okay, so let's say you wear an E.
So you have all kinds of things to do. So um, work with all that knowledge. There's a bunch more to be had, of course, but um, for an hour's worth of time, um, you could probably spend, you know, 10 hours just learning what I've showed you. But the main thing is to look at my pretty face. <laughs> um, take all those ideas and do what you will do with them, okay? You already know what you're playing. Again, this was a request to just get me off of the root notes, okay? So there you go. Tons of ways to get you off the root notes. You know the songs that you're playing and how busy you can or can't be, but if there's a hole, you can fill it, okay? And it don't have to be all over the place. I'm doing it all over the place just to show you how many choices you have, okay? Even if you only use two or three of those notes per song here and there, at least you are getting off of the root note, okay? I went overboard so you can go underboard, reel it back in and put it in the realms of taste and whatever kind of music it is that you play. So again, if you're playing worship music, um, you probably don't want to get too awful busy. But then again, you have 30 more notes to choose from um, no, 29 more notes to choose from because you're only playing one note at a time. So pick two or three of them and add them in. Okay, so you have a lot of ideas. Work on them within the confines of your music, your arrangements, what you have to do um, at your particular gig or um, don't have a blast and blow the rest of them <laughs> out of the dump. Um, all of a sudden you're Jocko Pistorius, if you're too young to know who he is, uh, Googling or YouTubing better and watch the boy play, boy, it's, it's amazing, him or John Entwistle and you don't have to be those guys, but uh, hopefully this will just be some insight to what is yet to come. And the best thing you could do is take what I've shown you today and think about it until you before you ever even buy one of my videos if you never do that's totally fine with me if you take this and learn enough from it you won't ever need anything else you can actually think this stuff through um, like I said there's only 12 notes in music it's a matter of what order you put them in so if you can't play 12 notes you need some different kind of help than a music teacher will be able to teach you. <laughs> okay, so hopefully your creative juices will start flowing and you got to change your shorts and um, that's the best thing that can happen to you. You, you know, get that flood of musical um, knowledge now. It's knowledge. Yeah, but the best thing instead of the knowledge is to get that inspiration that will um, make you want to play more and more. And you'll say, okay, I don't want to play E here anymore. I want to play E here. I want to play E here. No, I want to play E here. I want to play E here. Learn where they're all at. And then start counting up from your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. And remember, you got a low string to practice with. figure out stuff like that on your own. It, there's nothing there that I didn't show you. So learn on your own, okay? Um, that's the best way to remember things. Okay, thanks for spending the hour with me and I hope uh, for my one buddy that I actually did this video for, um, that that will help you out in some way, shape, or form. Once again, I'm Scott Grove. Click the link below. There are all kinds of free lessons. Just look where it says free lesson clips and that's where they're at <laughs> and lots of the paid ones too and you can get them for four bucks for a download so go get them talk to y'all soon and uh happy picking <laughs> bye bye <laughs>